So SAP installation is very uh, like uh, uh, easy task, not very difficult, but uh, uh, not accessible for uh, like everyone because SAP installation will be done on the server side. So, uh, so we have two types of SAP installation: clients installation as well as uh, software uh, server installation. So server installation is typical part. So in server installation, uh, we have to uh, check a lot of things. So those things we are going to discuss now. SAP. So we have two type of installation here. First is client software installation, client software installation. My screen is visible, right? Yes, it is visible. Okay. So SAP installation, client software installation, individually, individually on each end user PC, on each end user or in a laptop or PC, we have to install the client software. That is very easy. This software is known as SAP GUI, SAP GUI. This software uh, can be installed on uh, the client machine which uh, want to access SAP server. So for installation of client software, there is no, uh, nothing is a, a much requirement. Uh, 4 GB RAM, 4 GB RAM, and uh, uh, we can say 4 GB of hard disk is required, that's it. And you can, um, uh, install this software and it the installation time will take uh, the software size is around uh, uh, 1.1 uh, gb software size is around 1.1 gb and the time will take around uh, maybe below 5 minute below 5 minute this software will be installed so very easy i will show you how to install this software uh, client machine on the client machine we have to install the SAP GUI software, SAP graphical user interface. Uh, and another software is SAP server software. SAP server. So SAP server software that is uh, SAP system ID and uh, it is shared across multiple users. So multiple users. To install this software, uh, we require the server, server operating system. You cannot install SAP server on Windows uh, XP, uh, Windows 2011, 12, 13, like this. You require the Windows server operating system, server operating system, like uh, you require Windows server or Linux or Unix, like that. So first you require the server operating system and uh, you require at least 30 GB of RAM, 30 GB RAM, random access memory and you require the space, the space could be from, uh, from 20 to 20 terabyte, 20 GB to 20 terabyte, it will depend like which software you are going to install and time it could be from 1.5 hours to 1.5 hours to 15 days to install the sap software it can take 1.5 hours to uh, sorry 1.5 hours to 3 days it will depend which kind of software you are going to install the size would be 300, sorry, 1 terabyte, 20 GB to 1 terabyte, which kind of uh, software, uh, SAP uh, server software you want to install. So server is a typical part, client software, anybody can install and it's very easy. And uh, so how to install this software? First, we have to download the software. Download. 
SAP software from support.sap.com SWDC site. But it require user and password. Only SAP clients can log in into the site and they can download the software. If you are not a SAP client, you cannot download the SAP software. So if I just go to this link, support.sap.com SWDC, SAP software download. If we can download the installation software, support patches, databases. Suppose I want to install the, download the SAP. So it will ask for the user ID and password. It is uh, support.sap.com slash SWDC, right? Yes, SWDC, Software Download Center, SWDC. So it is saying that I am not a SAP client. I am a public user. I am a public user. I am a journal user. Since I am logging with my ID, so it is saying that you are logging with SAP a P user ID, public user ID. Visitors with S user ID, S user ID, S means system user ID, which is like a client, SAP client. So you will get a S user ID, then you can download the software. So no problem, I have already downloaded the software. So you have to download these things. You have to download the four things. First thing you have to download, number A, the software installation tool, software, so the software installation tool is known as SWPM, Software Provisioning Manager. Under here, we got a tool named SAP INST. So this is the tool. With this tool, you are going to install the SAP system. This is the tool. With this tool, we can install the SAP system. Second software, what you require? You require software number d you require kernel 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 means executables executables third software you require database software db software and fourth you require export export so these four uh, media require SAP software installation tool, kernel executables, database, uh, so the size of this tool is around uh, 1.1 GB, kernel executables size is around 1 GB, database software could be from two, uh, uh, 200 MB to it could be uh, 10 GB, it will depend on which kind of database software you want to install you are want to install oracle hana um, max db sap can be installed on any database and export media export media size will depend the size could be from 3 gb to 200 gb the size of export media it will depend which kind of uh, sap software you want to install you want to install sap erp CRM, SRM, SCM, what software you want to install. Client installation is very, very easy. First, I'm going to show you how to install the client software. Then I'm going to show you how to install the uh, SAP server. So client installation is very, very easy. You have to just uh, run the SAP GUI installation. So you just have to install the SAP GUI installation executable. It will install the. So first, I'm going to show you how to uh, install the client software. Client software means SAP logon. This you can install many uh, on many PCs. Like uh, suppose I am having 20,000 users. So on each machine, we will be installed the SAP logon. So that's why later on, you will be able to connect with this machine to the server and then perform the task. So to install this software, on the C drive, on C drive, I have made a folder SAP software. Under SAP software, I have maintained the client software. 
you can see it is a gui format in the zip format i will first extract first i have to unzip this file unzip this unzip version i have already unzip version is here so after that i go to the folder we have pres1 under pres1 we have the gui graphical user interface windows and then we can sap gui setup sap gui setup we will double click on this run then sap front end installer will be started since it's already installed so let's see what option it is going to give us sap are you able to see what it is written sap front end installer so this is a client software sap gui for windows got it suppose you are working with macintosh machine in macintosh machine you cannot install this software because in macintosh machine gui for windows will not work you guys are able to see right yeah yeah we are able to see yeah so yes, there yes, you yes. yeah so there you cannot install this software this is for gui for windows it is it can be installed on windows machine then next what so you want for to... gui for mac do we need to download is it yes so for gui you have two versions here one is gui for windows another is gui for java in macbook you have to install gui for java not gui for windows so, so gui for java means that works other than windows operating system any operating system yes it will work on windows operating system also gui for java will work on any operating system okay. but gui for gui for windows will work only on the windows operating system okay okay then you can select option here sap gui option here and then you can uh, like it's already installed so i am just adding some additional component here then next then it is starting installation so it's a just a, like a, it's a windows program a small program within 2 3 minutes it will install and this software also we have to download from swdc only right the yes. swdc GUI. yes you can download this software or hasan we also downloaded this from uh, sap is it in they downloaded and give it to us our support people okay okay ntt people they downloaded and give it to us gave it to us actually okay okay so this software is very easy you have seen it's like windows software after this uh, it is uh, like uh, it will create a icon sap logon and then you can connect to the server done sap front end installation is done completely so this was the installation sap logon this is after this the icon would be sap logon i have updated this sap gui so here we can have uh, more options are here it's a very complex not very complicated but we have lot of options here you can see options you can uh, uh, we have lot of files there configuration files are there uh, but we don't have to do too much here we just have to make a connection like we have to make a connection to the server and then we can try to connect to connect to the server yesterday i told you we have to give the application server instance number and system id these three things we will do and we will be able to connect to the server so right here we got sap gui we have multiple uh, servers uh, multiple client machine this will be installed on the client machine so this will be installed on multiple places like this this is client pc client pc1 pc2 pc3 like computer 2 computer 3 here we can install individually sap gui software we can install the sap gui software
So it's very, very simple. We can download and uh, we can install. It's a like normal SAP GI program. If you want to, uh, 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 like, uh, if you want to uh, copy the software, you can copy it from this location. I have put in the C drive. In the C drive, this software is there. Under C drive, SAP software, client software. This is only 1.1 GB. So you can upload into your Google Drive and then uh, you can uh, work and play. Because hey, this software you can put in your laptop also. There is no uh, nothing uh, requirement here, like minimum RAM or all these things. Right? Now I will show you how to install the SAP server software. But for server software, we must have the tool, we must have kernel, we must have database software, we must have export media. So these four softwares are required. So now we will try to install SAP, SAP software. And here we are going to, so first we have to decide before installation, we have to decide what would be my system ID? What would be my instance number? Instance. What would be my master password? What would be my master password? Because during installation, it is going to create the user DDIC and SAP star. During installation, it is going to create some users. So the password for SAP star and master, we have to provide. So we have to, before installation, we have to decide what would be our system ID, what would be our instance number, and we have to make sure that we must be having how much RAM? Are you able to see how much RAM required to install the SAP system? 30 GB RAM. So I will, I will check. First, we have to check whether I can install the SAP system here or not. How to check? What is Windows version? Winver, are you able to see what is the Windows version here? Yes, Sanjay. Windows Server 20, 2016. 2016. So you cannot install the SAP server software in your uh, Windows 11 or 12 or like that. It cannot be uh, installed. Thus, it can be installed only on the server operating system. Either it's a Windows server or Linux server. And even there is some prerequisite. You cannot install on Windows 2003 server. It could be always installed on Windows 2012 and above servers. So these are some prerequisites. So before installation, you have to check the prerequisites, like on which server it can be installed. So uh, normally it can be installed on later server, but uh, not very old server. You cannot install window SAP software on Windows 2003 server. 2003 server, it is not going to support. Even 2008 server, it is not going to support. So we are okay. Uh, we have Windows server. Another thing is uh, we can see the memory task manager. In the task manager, we can see. Are you able to see memory RAM? Yeah. yeah how, yeah, how much RAM I am having on this server? Thirty two GB. Thirty two GB. It, it means it's more than thirty GB, so it will not create any. Um, it will not going to. Uh, and we have so to make sure. GB is the bare minimum, right, for SAP installation. Right, SAP server installation. Yes. Oh, this is server installation. This has nothing to do with the database right now, correct? This will be having, uh, yeah. Ah, okay, we will also install HANA DB on this one, correct? No, no, no. We are not going to install the HANA DB. HANA DB we are not going to touch. HANA DB okay. we have separate requirement. HANA DB cannot be installed more less than thirty two GB. HANA DB required thirty two GB minimum. Minimum, yeah, because 32 GB, then only 16 GB can be, 16 yes. GB database size can be there, correct? Right, right, right. This is okay. not, we, we are not going to like uh, perform the HANA installation here. We so this are, is like a, a SAP installation, ERP SAP installation. Is, SAP installation with other database like MaxDB. We are installing yeah, with MaxDB, Max, correct, correct. Max yeah, MaxDB, okay. But it can be MySQL also, correct? Yeah, it could be my. It will depend on the database software. So I have downloaded only Max DB software here. Understood, understood. So and this DB software is not licensed from uh, SAP. It's a third-party software, correct? Max DB. 
Yeah, this MaxDB is from SAP itself. Uh, MaxDB company is proprietary of SAP itself. Uh, okay, understood. But, but if we let's say have uh, Oracle, we can also install Oracle or SQL. Yes, yes. Oracle, SQL, SQL also. We can install. Okay, okay. understood. Okay. SAP database will uh, Does work. It also on... support uh, PL SQL. Yeah, PL SQL everything. Uh, PL okay, SQL okay. is like the SQL variant of uh, from Oracle. So correct. Yeah. So we have the database software, MaxDB. So first we have to decide what should be our SID. So we have checked uh, our server is, so we have made make sure that our server is Windows 2016 server. We got, we got, uh, so two, three things we have to maintain. What is our server? Do we have RAM enough? We have hard disk, we have CPU enough. And uh, after that, we have to make sure that we 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 are do we have the these two uh, these uh, softwares like installation tool, executable, and export media. So I have already downloaded and I have put into this directory. I have put into the server directory. So I am having the SWPM. This is the tool. With this tool, we can install the SAP system. SWPM software provisioning manager. Under this, we are having this option, SAP INST. SAP INST to install the SAP software. And uh, we have kernel, we have export media, and we have the database. So all media I have already downloaded. Then we can start the installation. But before installation, we have to decide what would be my system ID. So system ID is a three character name that we have to give. What is your company name? GHC. GHC. So I make our system ID GHC because it's a three character, right? So I will make our okay. uh, system ID is GSC. Instance number I will make uh, uh, maybe instance number I will make 1010. Master password I am going to like tell India 7575. Okay. So this information during installation I will give. During installation of SAP system, this information I will give. So uh, SAP will create a GHC system with instance number 10, and it will create the user DDIC and SAP star. Uh, uh, password would be India 7575. So after installation, we can log in and we can check all the things. Right. OK, so these were the prerequisites. Now we will start the installation. So installation will take some time. Installation can take one hour to three days also. It will depend on which kind of SAP installation you are going to do. I am going to do only for the basis only. So I go to SWPM, SAP INST. This is the SAP INST. We are going to run this tool. So under, under what circumstances it will take more than two days or three days? It will depend on the which kind of software you are going to install. You are going to install the IDES which will be having the dummy data. The dummy data will be 20, uh, 200 GB, 300 GB. The more data it will be having, the more time it is going to take. Because here, it, we are not having any data here. We are just creating a like software. We are just installing the software. So software installation will not take much time. But suppose the company is installing the ECC, S4 HANA, IDES version, then it is going to take long time. Okay, so I'm going to start the SAP INST. So now it is starting the installation. If suppose your company is not able to do the installation, like companies can take the service from SAP itself to provide the installation. How you do you know how much SAP charge for instance? Installation of SAP system. No. Any no idea. You mean SAP. you mean the SAP partners or SAP itself directly? SAP itself also. Like suppose some customers are new into SAP area, they don't have the like uh, consultant or competency to install the SAP system. So they can take a service from SAP also. They don't uh, have the consultant who can upgrade, so they can upgrade service also from SAP. SAP 
provide these services also but sap services are very expensive because i was working in sap so uh, uh, i come to know for european regions they charge fixed price minimum they charge 50000 euro and it would for, be uh, for installation for installation upgrade that would be to, not one installation they will do installation for the development system quality system and production system they will install the three four systems they are going to install mm -hmm. okay okay so you are able to see uh, we are having software provisioning so first we have to what it is written are you able to see in orange color yeah welcome to sap installation yeah. yes welcome to sap installation so what you want to install you want to install sap netweaver you want to install business suite yesterday we discuss about the business suite under business suite you, what you want to install you want to install sap erp supply chain management supplier relationship management srm you have to select the option right option from here but if we are going to install the erp we have to select this option if i try to install the erp system we must require the export media export media will be uh, required and the export media size would be 30 to 40 gb and the installation time would be 10 to 20 hours 10 to 20 hours so Uh, i am not going to install the erp or any other software i am going to install the netweaver so you can see here the installation is the same whether you netweaver install netweaver is basically the other name for sap basis right yeah sap basis comes under netweaver so netweaver okay. is a platform to run the any every even ecc will also be having the netweaver every sap application is running on netweaver so here we are not like uh, Uh, we are not going to uh, have the business okay. data business data yeah, so netweaver is the excel actually the platform right sap yeah, platform yes sap platform to run the business so here we are selecting netweaver 7.5 selected the database our database is maxdb sap system we want to install the abap system here we can install the standard distributed high level where is uh, where is option for hana in this let's say hana is there also sap hana database this ah, okay sap hana database okay but before installing you have to install the hana database separately hana database you have to install separately while max db installation is not separately because max db is very very small database it is only 200 300 mb uh, database so it is not required separate installation so sap system standard system i just want to install the standard i don't want to make as a high availability or disaster recovery site we can like make the disaster recovery site also like primary site is in uh, qatar secondary site is in uh, jeddah or uh, third site is in um, us so we can make like that also
Uh, Sanjay, installation of database should be done to separate server, right? It could be on separate server or it could be running on the same server also. So like here, so the database software, DB software can running on the same machine or it could be on different machine also. Both are possible. DB. Both scenarios possible. SAP software you can install on one machine or database. Both are running in the same machine. Then it will be known as centralized. Centralized. And if it is a on different machine, then it is known as distributed. Got it? So it is possible. In our case, we are using both on running on the same machine. Got it? Okay. Okay. Now it is saying uh, we have selected centralized. Everything should be running on the one. We have only one server. In this server, I want to install everything. Then we have to define the parameter. Typical custom. Typical means it is going to ask the important parameters. We don't want to give each and every parameter. If you want to give each and every parameter, you can select the second option custom. We just want to like, uh, uh, we want to just give the uh, important parameter. So we have selected the typical mode here. Okay, what it is saying? What it is asking? Are you able to? Sub SID. SID, SAP SID, SAP SID. So what we have decided, what we should make SAP SID, GHC, GHC, right? GHC. so GHC, next. Uh, Sanjay, this, this SID is the system where you define, right? Like it's a development or a QA server or production server, is it? That's the SID? Yes, yes. SID, okay. ne, SID, under SID, you are having the different types of client roles, system roles. Where, with the settings, you can decide whether it would be a production system, quality system, and testing system. In the production system, you make the settings that system can, data cannot be changed. So that okay. is a production system. So according to the settings, you can configure it, whether it's a production system, quality system, and development system. So first, okay. we have to install the system. Like, like in your case, uh, I just give you one example, GHC. So like most of the companies, they are having the three systems. So how they are going to make the three systems? They are going to make like this. GHD. This would be your development system. GHQ. This would be your quality system. GHP. This would be your production system. Again. Okay. Got it. Again, it could be yeah. further further uh, categorized for ERP system, for CRM system. For ERP system, the naming would be like this. For ERP system, the naming would be like G E R D. Sorry, G E D. Okay. ERP system. This is ERP system of uh, uh, development. G E D is your development system g okay. e q this is your quality system and g e p g e p is the production system for erp okay okay got it so g they use g c d right g c d yes g c d yeah, okay. this system GCQ, is for g c q g c p yeah okay. yes g c q is for c r m system GCQ, okay okay q g c p so you got you are now able to relate the things yes <laughs> yes <laughs> Uh, so okay so, good. so we can like uh, relate what are the uh, ids are there thanks thanks yeah. okay so then it is saying that whether you are working in a domain you are having any domain domain means dot com or dot net or dot we don't have any domain so we don't select this option Then it is asking for the kernel, kernel media. Our kernel media is this one. Our kernel media is under here. Kernel, 
kernel so i will give the location of this media to this directory where is our media is located so i will give the location to the kernel where is kernel located so we have given sid now it is asking for the kernel now you can see on the downside it is extracting the exe files from the kernel file bin java lot of dll files jvm pdb lot extraction is going on so it is trying to extract the different kinds of files from the kernel kernel means executables to run the installation okay now it is asking for the password right so now i will give the password india 7575 why we require we have to give the password during installation it is going to create the different kind of users so it is going to create create sap star ddic because after installation you want to log in into the sap system to log in into the sap system you require the password so this is the password that we have to give so i am giving india 7575 as a password next it's very simple procedure Uh, so installation can be done by anyone it's very very simple procedure so you can select the what uh, things uh, required and you just require the four media the four media is this one you require software swpm kernels database software and export media it has asked for the kernel now it will it is going to ask for the database software and export media okay it is asking for the database id so we will make the database id is also same ghc it is also possible that we can keep different id also but normally we should keep as a same database host is the host name of the server is it yes where the database is running suppose if database is running this is server a server a and this is server b nebel was asking na whether we are going to run on the same machine or different machine if we are running on the database software on different machine during installation of sap software we have to point that database software is running on server b so it can connect to the database and then uh, it can uh, like provide the things so during installation we are getting some warning message that uh, some prerequisite is not met because due to high availability we don't want to set up our cluster setup so we are not going to it's okay this condition is not for high availability system we just want our system as a normal system now it is asking for the what software it is asking are you able to read what it is written here rdbms rdbms max db so it is going to ask relative relational database management software max db so max db software is here server database max db i am referring to here here we have the label.asc file in the label.asc file we have complete information the media location so i just go there and then point here next okay now what is it is asking last are you able to read what it is saying installation export export so it is asking for the export so export so we have first we have selected the options we are defining the parameters like what would be our sid uh what would be the password where is the location of uh, media 
under media we want to give the kernel database software and export media and uh, let's see after that we have to, okay so we have enough c drive and d drive d drive we are having 850 gb free c drive 37.4 gb is free Okay, now uh, this is just uh, we have to do next. We we cannot do the deep pooling the cluster table. So you can have clustering table that was earlier available. So in this version we don't have the cluster tables. So we don't have to do anything. It is by default disabled. We have to do next. Okay, then it is asking for the SLD. SLD is a system landscape directory. If you want to connect your SAP system to the SLD. So what here we are having a lot of SAP systems. So most of the companies, they have one Solman. One Solman and Solman gets the data from SLD, system landscape directory. So during installation, if you want to connect to the SLD, you can connect to the SLD. You can provide the connection to the SLD system landscape directly and SLD is connected to the Solman and Solman can be used for incident management, root cause analysis, change request management, quality gate management and other things. So if your landscape have existing SLD, you can provide the SLD detail. So we don't have SLD, so we can say no SLD destination next. Okay, it is saying that uh, secure storage individual key where the data will be you want to store as a secure with individual key or default key. So I'm selecting the default key, whatever the key is there to encrypt the data it can use. So we have selected with the default key.
Okay. Are you able to see the point number three? What it is written? Yeah, summary. Summary. Summary means it is a like whatever the input we have given, like we have given GHC. If you want to change now, you can change it, revise. But this is the last point here, and then we can do next. Now the installation begin. Now 10:22 a.m. The servers are located in US, so now uh, there is, so we can take their time 10:22. So now the process getting started. So now the installation process is started. Let's see how much time it will take. So it is going to install. Uh, it is going to create the user, install everything. The process got started. So we don't have to do anything. We just have to uh, monitor whether any uh, uh, step we got stuck. Then we can check the log file, log location. It will going to give us there. We can check the log if anything is missing. But if you are going to do proper planning, you will never ever get any kind of problem. But if you don't do planning well, you will going to get lot of problems. Planning means you have decided that you have enough memory, CPU, Windows version. You have set up the uh, file system. All these things you have made, then there will be no problem. So the installation get started. Okay, so installation is now going to be started. So so this was the SAP installation. After installation, what will happen? Uh, after installation. Uh, we will log in into the SAP system. We will in the SAP GUI. So after installation, what we have to do? After installation, apply license. Apply the license key. Log in. So after installation, log in with. SAP star or DDIC. After installation, login into SAP system with SAP star DDIC user in triple zero one client. Apply the license. Take backup. You have to perform a lot of things there. So those things we will see later on. First, uh, we are going to see how to install the SAP system. So installation is going on. So as per our agenda today, we are going to discuss about SAP installation and how to start stop the SAP system. Okay, so the installation is going on for GHC system. Now we will see how to start stop the SAP system. So we have one SAP system. What is our SAP system? Our SAP system is right now. We have another SAP system that is TRN, right? We have TRN system, and you are able to connect through SAP GUI, right? Yes. SAP GUI. Now I want to shut down this SAP system. I want to stop this SAP system, TRN system. We are having TRN database also. So we are having TRN SAP system as well as TRN database. Now we are connected through SAP GUI to this server, and then we can start and stop. So now we want to start and stop the TRN system. So that is our topic: how to start and stop the TRN system. So to start and stop the TRN system, you have to log in with log in into the server. Log in into Server using SID ADM user ID. So to start and stop SAP system, you have to log in with SID ADM user ID, and then you have two option for Windows system. Windows system. It is very very simple. You can use SAP MMC tool, Microsoft Management Console, and then you can start stop graphical start stop. Graphical start and stop. So now you can see 
and uh, if you don't have windows operating system you are going to use uh, unix operating system then you can uh, you can uh, unix operating system in unix operating system you can do putty putty and try to connect and then you can uh, execute the command stop sap start sap <laughs> okay now we will see the installation is going on right so let it be running so first we are going to see our sap system is running or not running trn system is running right trn system is running or not running running because you are able to connect to the system yes it's running it's running right so i am logging into the server now we can get this sap management console sap mmc here i can see sap system are you able to see trn system here trn system is visible yes i am right yes now i want to stop this trn system right click here stop are you able to see i want to stop sap system stop then hard soft hard means immediately stop the system soft means uh, whatever the task is going on it will first complete all the task if i am going to say hard then it is asking for the user id and password which not everyone like right now if you are going to start and stop you will not be able to do sanjay yes uh what are the cases why we need to restart the service yes if you have changed some parameter some parameter require the restart some parameter require the restart you have some parameter in sap system that uh, you have changed those parameters so those parameters require the restart so you have to restart the system you want to upgrade your operating system you want to upgrade your operating system you require the restart of your operating system restart of the sap system so there could be multiple cases right you want to upgrade your server you want to upgrade your operating system because sap is application that is running on a particular operating system if you want to upgrade your operating system you have to shut down and restart the application also right okay okay and suppose you change some parameter that parameter require the restart of the system in that case also we have to restart the system. so i am going to use the id trn trn is my sid trn is my sid then adm this is the user id sid adm and password is i am not giving the password because later on you will be having ghc system ghc system you can start and stop this i will keep with myself because otherwise uh, at least one system we will be having. sanjay i'm using user user 3 am i allowed to restart the service as well you are not able to restart because to to restart the sap system what user id you require are you able to see what user id you require s i d a d m what is s i d what is s i d here s i d is equal to t r n so you require the user id t r n a d m you cannot do you just have to confirm got it so you will not be or and not not everyone is going to start otherwise it will be completely ha hanged <laughs> right you are again i am stopping you are also stopping somebody else also stopping then it is uh, completely inconsistent the system okay so now our system is down it is grayed out you are able to see grayed out right now you can try to connect to the server using sap gui are you able to connect to the trn server what message you are getting are you getting this kind of message
Yes, I'm getting the same error message. Yes. It means server is not up. Server is down. Server is down. So this is stop. To start the system, we can do and perform the start also. So what happens when we are going to start and stop? What is the sequence? So this is the sequence. It read profile. Located under Under this profile, we are having the uh, profile directory. In this, we are having a start profile and default profile. Default profile. Start. So everything is mentioned there, like how the SAP system is going to read, uh, how to start. Everything is uh, mentioned there. If these profile files got corrupted, your system will not be able to start. Everything is mentioned there. So when we are going to start the SAP system, there would be a program. Uh, the program will be called. This program will uh, read this profile file and going to restart the SAP system. Okay, so what is this profile file? We can see right now. We can go to USR. USR. SAP. SID. SID is TRN. Sys under profile, we are having default profile. We are having the instance profile. If we open this instance profile with notepad, the complete information is given how the SAP system is going to start. So it is going to start the program 00. It is going to call this program SAP CPE. SAP CPE program is going to run and it is going to start the ABAP database. Are you able to see? Right, guys? Yes, Sanjay. So this, this is the, like, what is happening in the background. When we started a start, it is going to call this program, SAP CPE. SAP CPE is going to call a, another program, uh, uh, this start dbs.cmd program. It is starting the database. Then it is going to start the dispatcher. It is going to start the work process. So this is in detail information, how the uh, system is going to start. So when we execute this command, it is going to call SAP CP program, then SAP CP program is going to start database, then it is going to start the dispatcher, start, then it is going to start the work process, and then system will be So in this way, it is going to start. But we don't have to do anything. We have just gone through there and we have stopped. Now I'm going to start. Right now we cannot access. Again, I'm going to show you. We cannot access our TRN system. When I double click here, it is still showing. The server is not reachable. The server is not reachable because we have shut down our server. So now we can see the status also here. It is grid. It is grid. Grade means it is not running. So now I'm going to start again. Start. Okay. So it will take two, three minutes to start the SAP system. Message server and NQ server got started. Now it is starting the Database, database is running. Now it is starting the dispatcher, work process, gateway, ICM. But some processes are yellow, it's still not up. It is still starting. We can try now. This time we are getting some hanging situation. We are not getting the direct error message, but we are getting the uh, hanging situation because our uh, start process is in running. So it is saying that connecting to the TRN server. Now everything is green. Everything is green. We can see it here. Refresh. Everything is green. Are you able to see? 
so now we are able to log in into the sap system we can log in with the user id and password like ddic so we can now log into sap system so this is the start and stop of the sap system very simple and uh, very complicated also if you don't know the background it is very very complicated if you know uh, the things it's very very simple you won't believe i tell a true story about the start and stop when i started my career in sap basis i was working with a company csc computer science corporation in noida and uh, i have to start the sap system and i was not having much experience I, around 2 year experience i was having at that time to start the sap system it took me around 4 hours <laughs> can you can it took 4 hours and since it was a development system so not too much load if it was a production system so you can think about that uh, maybe i got terminated from the company because production system nobody can wait for 4 hours since it was a development system only few developers are going to work there so not much uh, because i was doing the wrong things these files got corrupted these files got corrupted due to this corruption even i was not knowing the sequence so i made more corruption in the system so then later on uh, i read a lot of documents and then uh, i could able to solve the problem but it the whole process took very long time so if you know the process then it's it's very very simple and even there could be a problem then you can solve that problem within few minutes rather than several hours so you installed new sap mmc not mmc mmc would be there under mmc actually most of the companies they don't have sap mmc in most of the company sap system is not running on windows sap system always run on Win unix operating system sap system always runs on unix operating system so you have to go to the command prompt and you have to start stop using this uh, command stop sap start sap and log in with this user id sid atm user id so you can check the file uh, on this location you can because you must be having very good knowledge whether this file content is corrupted or somebody deleted whether the services are up and running or not running so you have to check so as i said in my case it was some profile these files got corrupted somebody some somebody else or maybe uh, somebody intentionally uh, manipulated those files or uh, maybe due to some program these files got corrupted so we copied those files from the quality system we replaced with the sid whatever the sid was there we replaced with that sid and then it got started okay so this was now our installation is still going on so we started mm -hmm. at 10:22 so right now it is 10:40 uh 18 minutes it will not take much time i think within 1 hour it will install the sap system now import is running import monitor jobs running 5 waiting 1 completed 23 failed 0 total 29 jobs are there it is importing the abap programs this is the very lengthy step this is the time consuming step in our case it is not going to take much time but if it is a erp system ides system then it is going to take much time okay so now you can see as i shared you one book yesterday i shared you as a one book yesterday so if i go to that book practical basis so the thing is given here how to start sap system stop sap system and fundamentals of sap system administration system administrator task 
so what as a basis consultant you have to do you have to keep the system in good working condition user administration authorization administration transport background job all these things we are going to cover so first we are going to like uh, yesterday we started and uh, today we have installed the sap system tomorrow we are going to do the user administration authorization transport background job administration server administration monitoring printing starting and stopping the sap system installation is only one time installation may be uh, done somebody 10 years 20 years back now uh, due to some maintenance activities you have to start stop start stop is a very regular activity maybe you are going to take the offline backup for offline backup you have to stop the system so start stop you can read in detail i have explained here but if you want to study you can uh study in detail here and with the screenshot so how to start the sap system which is the user id this is the screen what are the how the sequence which process is going to run which process is going to stop we can see all this information sanjay yes uh, is sap basis admin is responsible in assigning and, cre and creating access roles yes yes a basis consultant is responsible for creating and uh, granting the roles yes so we are going to cover how to create roles how to grant roles also we will cover okay okay but some some organization it's different some organization uh, sap consultant is not responsible for start uh, like this one it will depend on organization to organization some organization we have separate security consultant some organization basis and security work is done by the basis consultant mm -hmm. okay so till it is running what you can do i am going to give you one exercise in that exercise you are going to perform some uh, like familiarity with your uh, sap system so i am going to give you one exercise uh, you are going to log in into the trn system you are going to create a favorite you are going to run the reports i am going to assign some task to you guys so you will get more familiarity with the sap system yesterday i have given you one exercise there you uh, performed some task now i am going to okay so first you have to log in to sap system log into trn system make it black color so first you have to log in into the trn system with your user id uh, with password india 7575 and then put su01 t code in favorite
So put SU01 T code in the favorite list. So no need to remember it. Change, increase the font size, font size of SAP. Log on to see better. You want to increase the font size because maybe you are using some specs and uh, you want to do some personalization. Some personalize. Run report RS PF PAR using. T code essay thirty eight browse table T triple zero using SC sixteen. T triple zero table contain all T codes. Then, so these are the and uh, run T codes. Run T codes with below slash n slash o slash n e x slash n e n d like this run s m fifty t code and click on So how to see the help, how to uh, like perform the like uh, different task in, uh, so to get more familiarity with the system, you can use this until the installation is going on. So installation is still running. It is going to take some time. So you can perform this activity. In this activity, I'm going to show you, then you have to perform this activity, right? You are able to see my screen, guys? Yes, Sanjay. Yes, so I'm going to put SU01 because no need to remember all the T codes. So first I'm going to show you here. This is the favorite list. Are you able to see the favorite here? Yeah. Yeah. So I want to add one T code here. So I can insert the transaction code. SU01. So don't no need to remember the T code. Next time onwards, I can go here and I can go to the favorite list. Suppose I am using 1020 T codes, I can come here and I can run the T code directly. So I don't have to remember and again and again, I can go and come here for execute. Second, increase the size of font of SAP logon. So right now I'm seeing some font here, right? Now it is in the different uh, font. I want to increase the font. I can go to options here. Options, font setting. This is courier new 11. I want to make it 16. Okay. Apply. Okay. Now it is 16. Again, log off and log in again. X, exit. And then again, log in into the SAP system. Now you are able to see it is increased. Able to identify the difference. Right? Yes. Now the font has been increased. Now it is more uh, bigger and it is for me only. It is individual thing. It is not global thing. I did it for myself. Like user one has done. So user two will not be impacted. User three will not be impacted. It is an individual.
and i want to run a report program rs pf par there could be several abap programs custom programs will started with z and y we can run execute i am running a program it's okay so this will show all the parameters it is going to it is going to show me all the parameters which is available in sap system okay so i can see the output of this particular uh, report this is the output of a report sc16 data browser now the table name is t triple 0 so these are the t codes to access different kinds of like to access any table we use sc16 t code to run a report we use sa38 t code now i want to see how many t codes are there number of entries oh, not this one so this does not contain the table uh, t code we have to check which table contain all the t code this table contain client this table contain client so we have only two client and uh, tstc tstc table contain the t codes tstc table contain all the t codes so you can see how many clients are there we have seen two clients 000 and 001 so now i if i type su then i don't do i type su star it will show me the su related t codes su0 su01 to maintain the user display su03 su12 su20 su22 what is the different t codes and what are the meaning total how many t codes are there we can see number of entries here tstc number of entries in this table there are 7428 t codes are there this is this these are the t codes related to basis and abap above not related to func uh, business function business function related t codes are not here because it it is not having the ecc hr finance sd other modules these are related to now we have to run the t codes slash n slash o yesterday i told you slash n for new slash o open a new session this is for exit this is for exit from the system exit so what is the difference between this one if i type nex or if i type nend nend will ask the confirmation nend exit with confirmation message and uh, slash o for open a new session slash n now run sm50 t code and check the status sm50 okay status i i am not able to understand what is the meaning of waiting what is the meaning of running so what i can do i can type function f1 function f1 will give me the help 
function f1 will give me the help in case of any problem if i am not able to understand a particular section then i can type function f1 function f1 has given me a help screen are you able to see this help screen right yes so we have different status waiting running on hold completed shut down stand by then we can understand what is the status of the work processes how to run the t code uh, add the t code to your uh, favorite list you can do some personalization running a report how to browse the table run the t code with different options and uh, f1 key to see the help to get the help from us <coughs> sanjay yes can you show us how to run a report how to run a report okay to run a report we have to go transition code sa38 to run a t code n n means i want to overwrite existing transaction sa38 yes, report name report name you have to type the report name then execute button this is the execute button if you case to... i don't know what are the list of reports if you don't know the report then what you what you you are then if you know the ne first name like rs kind of thing you type rs it is going to give the report uh, help kind of thing automatically mm. so you can is there a way to display all the list of report and then from the list of the report i can determine which what what is the program name yes you must aware about otherwise if you don't know what to run then uh, why you are running then uh, if you are not able to recall then recall thing you can see it from here so like so i sa38 sa38 was in the name of the report that's why it came or sa38 will show all the list of all the reports sa38 is a t code to run the report sa38 is a t code to run the report then you have to specify the report name there could be thousands of reports even the abab developer can develop a new report also okay because there are in the instances that i don't uh, i want to check if there is a existing report regarding to a list of users or list of existing report that is already in the system okay. if is it possible just... to display all the what the list of all the reports available in the system yeah it's this is possible if you just uh, type star you, then you can see all the report ah so star see, only yes so you can see thousands of reports you can see here this is showing only 200 hits beginning you can further uh, like uh, uh, in the selection criteria you can set and then you can see all the reports uh, how can we export this uh, records is it possible report to possible yes it's everything is possible so this is can... screen i mean this this is screen you are showing i wanted to export those records whatever is screen okay so okay as so in the program in the program we type the star and it will show all the names i type star then execute because here you have to you have to specify the report name here the report name but if you want to see all the reports from here when you are going to search this is the search window in search window they have restricted for 200 entries otherwise there are thousands of reports there they will uh, what we say they will uh, uh, they will uh, like uh, reduce your system yeah. they they will reduce the system performance also so you must know the report okay i got your point you want to display all the reports right yes sanjay yes rs user 200 200 to display all the users list of users according to the password chain we can execute this report this report will show all the users who have logged in to the system six users okay so you want to display all the reports to see the table we know sc16 is a t code to see the table so we can go to sc16 we can type tr dir tr dir that contain this table contain all the reports let's see tr dir number of entries how many reports are there it will show first 
there are thousands of reports that's why right. <laughs> there are there are million. <laughs> yeah, million 1.5 million this is very small system if it is an actual system then it is okay so i i just i i take the report with starting with rs so i just type rs rs star and then execute it is going to show me the reports with starting with rs are you able to see yes. right rs now you want to take the uh, export that is your question right yes so i i you want to put into the excel sheet or something like that right yes so you can go util uh, setting format list save list save as a local file you can save as a local file there you can specify the html format text file with the unconverted with tabs then you can look save it to local then you can generate so whatever you are seeing here you can like do the report so the table name is tr dir tr dir table contain reports so you can go to sc16 t code and uh, sc16 t code you can type tr dir and then you can see all the uh, reports in sap system Okay, Got it. So everything is possible uh, if you know these things. So you know which table contains. So you know SE sixteen. Uh, we can see the table browser, and uh, uh, from there you can see the report. And then in SE thirty eight, you can run it particularly. Okay, so now we will see our SAP installation is done or not done. Let's see. It's still running. So we started at ten twenty two. Now it's eleven fourteen. Almost fifty two minutes has been passed. It's still running. Mm, some activities create DDL views, restart instance, activate service service. It will take some time, ten fifteen minutes, and then it will get installed. Okay, so any query for yesterday session and today session, you come to know the SAP overview, how to log in into SAP system, how to start to stop, how to install the SAP system. Just uh, if you can please uh, quickly once again show in the MMC how you can how we can start stop. Yes, so in MMC you can open the SAP MMC, you can select the system. What is system here? TRN. TRN is our system. Right click here. Start stop option is here. We can stop and start. But to start and stop, you require a user ID. Like suppose okay. I want to and stop. Once it is stopped, we will see the status as it is stopped. Correct. Yes, the color will be change. It is right now green. Then the mm -hmm. color will be gray. Gray color. So suppose when we stop, then uh, let's say there are hundreds of users who are logged in. They will get some alert message on their GUI. they will be logged out immediately when you shut down they will be kicked out from the system hmm, and will, they will get some error message right yeah error message they will be not able to connect whatever they were doing everything will be lost so if you they have not saved anything they will also lost that information ah uh, okay so it has this is has to be done with maybe prior approval of the downtime correct yes yes prior approval of the downtime and you have to raise a message also like suppose 
what is the time right now right now the time is 11:15 us time i'm talking as the server time so you can see here i want to shut down the system right now suppose after 10 minutes i want to shut down the system so first i am going to raise a message sm02 is a t code where we can raise a message i am going to write a message SM02 SM02 is for advisory SM202 is for writing a message to everyone I am right I have written a message did you receive this message ah uh, no. yes we received you received my message yes you received my message like hi friends we are set, yeah we are shutting down the system in next 20 minutes and we can mention the exact time so uh, they can save the things and they can plan accordingly or they can uh, like whenever we have to perform the activities maintenance activities we have to inform everyone also in this way. message I, i sent this i sent this yeah. yes yes message received so now this uh, uh, we are installing the ghc system after installation of ghc system you guys are going to connect with the ghc system and you are going to start and stop the ghc system i am not going to give you the credential of trn system uh, but i am going to give you the ghc system and then i will ask any one of you to start and stop the ghc system first let it uh, first let it installed after installation what you have to do you have have to make a connection login into ghc system so how to login into the ghc system first in sap gui we have to make some settings you have to make the new entry and in the entry what you have to type you have to type the application server application server you have to type instance number instance number and you have to type system id system id so system id would be ghc there is no problem instance number would be what would be the instance number instance number would be uh, 03 maybe or application server application server would be local host local host or ip address the ip address this was the ip address so after installation in sap logon pad you have to make this new entry we can make this new entry application server and then you have what the user id and password login into the gsc system what would be the user id at that time your user id would not be this one you have to login with ddic with password india 7575 and then you have to yeah and this this password and username is what we define at the time of setup correct at the time yes. of installation we have not defined the username username is by default this is the this default user defined. but this DDIC. password we have defined so master password this password so ddic so that, is the default master uh, password uh, like what we have in sa in sql correct no no this is not the master password this is the user password like sa correct. sa user yeah correct. password okay. password we can define here The DDK DDK is any abbreviation, uh, Sanjay? DDK DDK? Is da data dictionary. Ah, uh, data dictionary. Okay. Data dictionary. So, uh, and uh, how we, if we want to reset the password for master admin, how we can change it? 
later on you can change you can log in with ddic you log in after that you can change it. like here i am logging with I or, or i can with, i can also i can also change it from su101 yeah yeah su01 like SU right SU01. now i'm su01 yeah su i am logging here with uh, user id dd now i want to change the password su01 i can type ddic ddic change the password here change password new password and then password i can mention here. so this password is can be changed uh, uh, going forward right it, it's like it's not, there is no yes, impact yes. to change the password like right. some service stop working or something like not no. like that right this is the application user this is the application user some operating system user some os user like ghc adm will be created will be and then you can log in log in directly from this user id also at you can log in into this server using this id ghc adm id with password india 7575 during installation it create no, no we understood we i, I understand uh, different accounts i was just asking in the application if we change the main yes yes application there is a application, no application so this if you change the password only impact only impact client the users are specific to the client because you are logging into 001 or 0000 so right now you see here i am logging into which client whenever i am going to make a connection i am going to log in into which client yes 001 right so this yes, ddic no? we will not use for any service kind of uh, client right it's a use uh, actions right like for example windows you have right some service we use the login user names right this is not the windows account operating system no i am not asking windows account like mm -hmm. in the sap in the mm -hmm. sap whether uh, are we going to any any service service is related to the application users password details we can, we can do and everything ddic is a master user so mm -hmm. we can perform all the activities it is having sap all full authorization so mm -hmm. you can perform all the activities in the but the user ids are specific to a client like here so okay when, like your your user id is created for can you log in into triple zero client now my question is you can try just now you will get the uh, under better understanding please try to log in with um, in uh, i am asking you please log in into please log in into trn system 000 client 000 client with your user 1 to 4 please try then you will get okay. a clear understanding please log in into trn system 000 with your user 1 to 4 i we are logged in already i am already logged in yes, no no that's why you are making a mistake <laughs> uh, okay you try to log in you try with to with ddic or with user 2 i am saying please read this sentence what log in to trn system 000 client with your user 1 to 4 okay we logged in with user 4 i logged in with my user 4 okay no but he saying 000 i mean instance 00 no no that what? is instant 000 is client is or when you open it comes 000 only that's why you are making a mistake whether it's a 000 or 001 it is coming 001 i was so trying to change it to 00 right yes yeah, so that's why i am asking you can you make it to 000 and you can log in with your okay. user id and then i think it yeah, will not work okay. because you gave access to only 000 i think yes. 001 so what, yesterday i explained the client is a administrative unit user you are the four? no you will not be able to log in because yeah. okay. this neighbor okay. password is incorrect yes, yes. because there Password is no is user incorrect. id because there is no user id there is no user id of yours how you are going to see these things now i am going to show you but in triple zero client who can log in ddic ddic user can ddic can use ddic uh, always has to be logged in using client triple zero is it 
No, no, DD no, can DD pass can any, use any, any client any password. Client. And yeah, master password. DD so, keys like a SA password, Saurabh. So you can log in like anything. Just let me write it down just yes. a second. DD and then I can log in with the... It's like administrator password. Hmm. Like OS administrator. No, OS is different. This is application. Yeah. Hmm. So... Tomorrow we will going to discuss about uh, the user and authorization. There you will get more idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So now I'm logging into triple zero client. So mm -hmm. I have two windows. One window I am. You can see what it is written here. TRN. Are you able to see? Yes. What, yeah. what it is written here? Triple zero. TRN triple. one triple zero. And now I. So you have two clients now. Yeah. And yeah, TRN one log... zero zero one. Now I'm going to run a report. Okay. SA thirty eight. I am going to demonstrate how many users are there. RS USR 00200. This report shows how many users are there. Okay. I am going to run this report. So are you able to see the users here? How many users are there in client 001? Oh. 001 for six. Six user. DDIC, SAP star, user one, two, three, four. These yes. users I have created. Who created? DDIC. When created mm. yesterday, 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 I have created your IDs. Okay. Yesterday, I have created it. Now, I run the same uh, same report in triple zero, triple zero client SA38 program RS USR 200. How many Only users? Two are there? User. DD can SAP star. SAP these are the, star. Yeah, these are the two default users are there. SAP star okay. is for a special purpose. That is a default user. And these users, if we want to, if we want to change the access rights, is it possible? Yes, yes. Access right, everything we will discuss tomorrow, day after tomorrow. Okay. There we are having like how the role profile is going to work. So we can change everything. Fine. Okay. We can change like here if i go to su01 you ask me so i'm just going to show you ddic okay then edit button here mm. the profiles so here what it is written here SAP what it is, all all what system it is, authorization. all system authorization if i don't want to give all system authorization i can change also i have okay. predefined authorization several thousand we can create our own authorization as per our company policy okay got it Okay, got it. Yeah. Okay, so now uh, <laughs> very good information that without any problem, we are able to install our SAP system. Are you able to see what is the message it is getting? Right? Exactly. Execution of SAP net completed successfully. So our system got installed. It means our GSC system got installed. We can see in SAP MMC, our GSC system is up and running or not running. We open SAP MMC, SAP system. So now in this server, I have two SAP system is running. One is TRN, another is GHC. Are you able to see GHC is running? Yeah. Right. And the instance number is 02. The instance number is 02. It's written outside here. Two. Two means instance number. So whenever we are making a connection, I have to type like this. So you can log in into SAP logon pad and make the new entry. Please log in into the SAP logon pad. I may try to make entry and try to log in into the SAP okay. system. Five minutes for this. Add new entry. Add new entry with application server, localhost Next or this one. Yeah, application server. IP will be same, right? IP is same or you can type localhost also. Localhost, yes. Yes, yes. Localhost, instant number 02. System ID is TRN only, right? Yes, number. System ID, GHC. Uh, GHC, okay. System ID. GHC. Finish. Yeah, GHC is coming. Now, if I log in. Client is 001, right? For GHC also. India, 75, 75. 
uh, username is still not there. Client is uh, 001. Okay, sorry. Uh, so we have to go to the logon pad and everyone is able to create a connection to the GSC system. Yes, it's connecting. connecting. Connecting, but the username not working. User did not. Okay, let me check. Application server, local host. Local host. Local host. Instance number? Zero. Two. System ID? GHC. GHC. GHC, yes. Finish. GHC. User ID, DDIC. Password? Oh, DDIC, okay. India? 7575. Your user ID will not work. Yeah. Yeah. DDIC, default user will work. So you have yes. to, that's why I that's why I mentioned here. You have to log in with DDIC user ID, DDIC and password India 7575. Because during installation, we have given India 7575 as a password. So we are now able. After that, you got the license expiration. License will be expiring in the 19th. Mm -hmm. Days. Okay. So, oh, back in continue system. with this logon and end any other logins in the system. Is it okay? Okay. It's giving me some message. User Didik is already logged on. Client. Oh, okay. So it is already logged on. Okay. Maybe no, it's logged yeah. in. So simultaneously, we can log in in a same username can be logged into multiple session, right? Yeah, it can be possible, but sometime it is like initial system. So it is not with the GDIC, maybe not can be or not used, but okay. other users can be. So I'm going to create a user ID. I'm going to create a user ID GSC user with all you all you guys, you can log in with GSC user. I'm now creating a GSC. So after installation, we have to perform a lot of things. After installation, we have to apply the license. We have to uh, configure the system. A lot of things are there. So this is the first time when we are running the software. So that's why it is taking very long time. It is saying that uh, <laughs> no default company has been maintained. No company. You have installed the software, but for which company it is working. So I'm just going to mention it's a GSC. GSC. Company name is our GHC. <laughs> so this software is only for GSC company. I'm creating a company also. So we can set the company name, company location, uh, company name, company address, company country. Country is Kuwait. Huh? So all the countries are mentioned here. What is the KW? Right? What is the time Qatar. zone? Qatar. Your is North Kuwait. Qatar. Qatar. Qatar, what is the Kuwait? Qatar is different country. Eh? Qatar, UA. Time zone, you can set the time zone and only the country is mandatory. Time zone is also not man oh. mandatory thing. So we have to fill that time zone also. Time zone minus how much? Plus two will be there. Quite three will be there. Plus three. Plus three. Plus three, yes. Plus three. If you see, you just go down, maybe it will be there. Yes, yes. Plus three will be there. It's not in order. Huh? Uh, yeah, Iraq. Or... Iraq. Uh, miss... uh, Iraq. Plus three. No problem. Yeah. Plus, plus three, yes. Plus three. So now this, when I, we will see the time zone Iraq is not valid in country Qatar. <laughs> yeah, see, maybe <laughs> so change it, is, it to Riyadh. Use Riyadh. Use Riyadh. Yes, yes, yes. Saudi Iraq. will be there. 
yes saudi would be there yes. <coughs> so, so we are quite also you can use because when we are setting the time zone so our server time will be according to yes. this time zone only yes hmm. so okay so now if i go to system status now i can see the in the system status it is going to show the qatar time so whenever you are going to log in and check the time zone so now the qatar time is how much qatar time is 1441 now 1441 now less yeah 1441 okay it is still it is is taking the time of this system maybe has, iraq yeah maybe system yeah still, iraq uh, yeah 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 that that's why it is not taken the right hmm. it is taking the us time system time it is taking the us time the time is here and time mm-hmm. zone this is the central european time mm. and the europe is it's a 141 right okay so here i can mention so i am creating an, a common user for everyone in this system gsc user and uh, i will give the password india 7575 so when i make a user like service user service user can be used by many users service user can be used by many users after that i save this information so now i have created a user id gsc user that you can use to log in with password india 7575 